Well, good morning once again. Good to see you on this rainy day. I'm glad you could make it out in the middle of the rain here. As uh, many of you know, we are in a sermon series called Move. And uh, this is our second sermon in the series. And this Move sermon series aligns with our Move initiative. Uh, this campaign that we're in for several weeks. And again, as I said earlier in the service, uh, if you want to know more, please take home one of those Move booklets you'll see there in the pews. You can grab one on your way home so you can learn more about that. And in this MOVE uh, sermon series, we are taking a look at the Exodus, right? The second book in the Bible, the book of Exodus in this series. And that, that story of Exodus is the time when God ignited his people to be on the move. God uses Moses and Aaron to set the Israelites free from, the, from slavery in Egypt and moves them out of slavery and into freedom. And uh, so we're taking a look at our God on the move in Exodus as we recognize God is on the move right here today with us. And so for these five Sundays, this last Sunday was the first one, uh, we're going to take these five Sundays in Exodus and we're asking God to move me, to move us, to move them, to move together and to move the world that we might be glorified in those five ways. Move me, move us, move them, move together, and move the world. So today, second Sunday in the series, we're asking God to move us. And let's see how God might do that in his word. We're going to take a look at Exodus chapter 4, verses 27 through 31. So let's pray that God will illuminate this passage in his word into our lives. Gracious God, we thank you that you are a God who is on the move. You're on the move uh, in us today. You were on the move with us uh, back several thousands of years ago during the Exodus, Lord. And Lord, we know that you're on the move in each one of our lives. And so we pray right now that as we open your word, that you would be once more on the move by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would leap off the pages of our scripture and, and wrap itself around our hearts and minds and lives and move us to be more of the people that you are calling us to be. And Lord, we know that you're going to do this because we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Exodus 4, 27 through 31. The Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went. And he met him at the mountain of God and kissed him. Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord with which he had sent him and all the signs with which he had charged him. Then Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of the Israelites. Aaron spoke all the words that the Lord had spoken to Moses and performed the signs in the sight of the people. The people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had given heed to the Israelites and that he had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever felt terribly alone? A time when you just needed somebody at your side? This scripture passage, I believe, addresses that. And this scripture passage also reminds me of a story that a police officer shared with me a few years ago. Uh, he was telling me the story about this young police officer who is uh, being examined by a superior, I understand, and, and the superior asked this young police officer, he said, what would you do if you had to arrest your mother-in-law? And the young officer quickly said, I'd call for backup. <laughs> Now, I know that's probably not really that funny to that police officer, but at this point in Exodus, I believe Aaron is called as Moses' backup. This passage shifts from last week from a move me passage. It changes from Moses to move me to a move us situation when Aaron is called in as backup. Now, we know from earlier verses from in this passage that Aaron was planning on seeing Moses anyway as a, a friendly family encounter, but God gave the encounter's greater purpose. God calls Aaron as backup for Moses. 
Now, when they meet, uh, God used Moses to inspire Aaron. Moses shared with him how God is on the move. And that's how Aaron hears God's leading. That's how Aaron speaks God's word. And that's how Aaron performs God's miraculous signs. Now, you know, God could easily have told all this to Aaron himself. We see in the passage that God speaks to Aaron one-on-one. -on -one. And yet, God chose to use Moses to reveal his will to Aaron. See, so initially Aaron thought he was visiting Moses as family, but God had, Moses visit, had Aaron visit Moses as backup. He thought he was just coming as family, but he was coming as backup. See, God's intentions were far bigger than Aaron thought. So don't you see, our encounters in life today is this, are the same way. Our encounters with others, I believe, I firmly believe, are orchestrated by God. God has put you in the path of others so that that person might hear God's movement in your life. And you can share God's movement in your life with them. And so in doing so, God moves us from having my story to now having our story. We're inviting others to join in. You see, you are not alone in God's call to move with him. Look around you. We are each other's backup. A recent college graduate went for his first job interview. And it seemed to be going well. And so the human resource officer asked, well, what starting salary are you looking for? And this young graduate said, um, I'm looking for $125,000 plus benefits, you know. So what are those benefits? And uh, the interviewer, he replied, well, um, what would you say to a package of six weeks of vacation, 14 paid holidays, medical and dental, a retirement matching fund that for 50% of your salary, and a company car at least every two years, say, a red Corvette? And the graduate said, wow, are you kidding? And the interviewer said, yes, but you started it. It was just too good to believe. A red Corvette. You see, I bet Moses and Aaron actually felt like that when they went to speak to the Israelites. They went to the elders there with a promise of God's amazing salvation. And yet earlier in our passage, the earlier that uh, before our passage starts, Moses tells God that the people are not going to believe. They're going to never believe this. God's amazing red Corvette promise is just too good to be true. They won't believe. The news about God is too good to believe. However, because God moved Moses and Aaron, they are able to do the miraculous. And now the Israelites believe. Now the Israelites know that God is actually for them. Now the Israelites embrace God's red Corvette promise. It says in verse 31, the people believed. It's so simple. They didn't even argue. They just believed. And when they heard that the Lord had given heed to the Israelites and that he had seen their misery, it says they bowed down and worshiped. You see, God was on the move in Moses and Aaron so that all the Israelites would be moved by God. They are moved to faith. They are moved to belief. They are moved to worship. And it was miraculous. Moses said these people wouldn't believe in the too good to be true red Corvette promise that God would actually rescue them from slavery after 400, more than 400 years of slavery. They couldn't believe it, but you know what? Now they believe. God moves in Moses and Aaron to miraculously move God, moves God's people. And God can move us like that. Today, you are you see, you are not called to move with God alone, but in community. Move together. And when God moves us, we can do the miraculous. We are each other's backup. When my dad died a number of years ago, um, my mom and my brother and I went to the pastor's office there in Berkeley 
to plan the memorial service. And the pastor at that time was Mark Laberton. Many of you know him. He's now the president of Fuller Seminary. And Laberton is a deeply intelligent, thoughtful, pastoral man, and he was caring for us so well in that moment. And I have to say, it was a difficult time for me because that was a period of my life where I was living far away in Colorado Springs, and, uh, and I was so far away from my mom, who is now alone, and I, I, I was worried for her. I was asking questions. How would she get along without dad? What if something happened to her while I'm so far away? And as we were wrapping up the memorial service planning, Laberton thoughtfully turned and asked if there was anything else that we were concerned about. And it was in that moment that I just blurted out, I'm just so worried about my mom. What's gonna, who's going to watch out for her? And as only Laberton, Laberton could do with his deeply wise and caring way, he smacked my forehead with the palm of his hand. And he said, that's what the church is here for. <laughs> I have to say that was the most pastoral thing he could have done in that moment for me. Don't you see? It was my red Corvette promise coming true. And that promise, I tell you, is still playing itself out today. Praise God for the church. You see, friends, Christians are not Christians alone. We are an us we're not a me. When God is on the move, God moves us. God uses community. God moves people together for his purposes in moving the world. See, friends, God uses others to let you know that he hears you and he loves you and he cares for you. God surrounds you with his people, with the church. So, friends, you are not alone. You are called to move with this community of believers. That's why we cry out, God, move us. So where are you in this move us equation? Maybe God is calling you to be, to be the one igniting the community to be on the move, like a Moses or an Aaron. Or maybe God is calling you to open your heart to be ignited by someone else that you might join that movement. You might move with us, with God. Wherever you are, I guarantee God is including you in this movement. You see, in our story in Exodus, it just started out with Moses. It was just a Moses thing. And then it became a Moses and Aaron thing. And then it became a Moses and Aaron and elders thing. And then it became a Moses and Aaron and elders and all of God's people thing. So don't you see, you are not alone. God's people, as God's people, we are all on the move with him, moving in miraculous ways. And I promise you that movement is bubbling up all around us today. God is igniting not just you, but us to move with him. So if you believe it, let's cry out, God, move us. Say that with me. God, move us. In 1962, 1962, President Kennedy went and visited the NASA, uh, uh, visited NASA, the, the NASA. You know, this was the, the period of time when our country was pushing for, uh, for putting a man on the moon. It was that, that space exploration was just getting off the ground, so to speak. And Kennedy was at NASA meeting all of these high authority people working on this project. And these were intensely inspirational people. And as, as uh, President Kenny, Kennedy was going through NASA, he, he bumped into a janitor doing his job. And, uh, and so then this janitor uh, was kind of surprised by Kennedy's presence. And being the thoughtful man that Kennedy was, he asked the janitor what he was doing. And the janitor replied, I'm helping put a man on the moon. <laughs> what a great reply. The janitor didn't say, I'm emptying the trash. He didn't say, I'm mopping the floors. No, he said, I'm helping put a man on the moon. You see, friends, that is not me thinking. That is us thinking. 
We don't follow Christ alone. We do it in community, the community of believers, and in that God can do miraculous things, even more miraculous than putting a man on the moon. You see, God longs to move you so that God can move us. And God longs to move us to do amazing things. Do you believe it? Yes, if you believe it, then let's shout to him, God move us. God move us. I'm so good. If you believe it, I believe it. And I believe God is using Exodus today, the story of God's people on the move, to call us all to move with God today. I can tell you that our leadership believes God has placed more Park Presbyterian Church, this church, in this place, at this time, for God's reasons. And we know that God is on the move and wants MPC to be a place where our hearts are ignited for Christ and a place to grow deep in Him for generations to come here. And that's what our MOVE initiative is all about. Friends, if you are on our our mailing list, you should receive a MOVE commitment card in the next couple days. And we ask that you would use that card as a spiritual exercise to prayerfully consider how God might be asking you to be on the MOVE, not just with yourself, but with us, to move us. And we're going to dedicate those cards in a few more Sundays on November 13th. So We ask you to be in prayer as you ask God what he is doing in your own life to move you. Now imagine this. We have over 450 members at Moore Park Presbyterian Church. And if ever every one of them committed to our on-the-move God by committing their hearts, by committing their resources, by committing their lives to Christ, I promise you our discipleship here, our outreach could go through the roof. And so remember, you are not alone. We are each other's backup right here. Like God moving Moses and Aaron with an amazing red Corvette promise to move his people, God longs to move you. God longs to move your heart. God longs to move you with his passion. God longs to move you so that you can move with us. And God moves us to do amazing, miraculous things. So if you believe it, shout it out one more time like you mean it. God move us. God move us. Exodus, my friends, is a story of our on-the-move God moving his people. So in this season, let's be in prayer. Let's pray, Lord God, move me, move us, move them, move together, Lord. Move the world that you would be glorified. Friends, our God is on the move. Do you dare to move with him? Amen.